I could probably make at least five videos on simultaneous equations, otherwise known as systems of equations, but I thought I'd do a quick one just to show you my favorite method for solving the more simple simultaneous equations. I say simple, but some of the examples here will be quite challenging, and particularly the last one, the third one, some students won't get. Some of you may know how to do simultaneous equations, but you always use the substitution method. But this video is going to give you what I believe is the best method of solving simultaneous equations quickly and efficiently. What am I talking about? Well, a simultaneous equation is when you have more than one variable, usually two, sometimes three, but that's another video. And you need to find one or both of the variables. There will usually be two variables and two equations. For example, if you look at the two equations in green, they will then ask you for one of the values, for example, in this case, y. And let me tell you what most students will do. They will isolate, for example, the x by subtracting y to both sides of the top equation. And then once they've found that x equals minus 7 minus y, they'll put that into the second equation. That's called the substitution method. I'm not going to go through that, firstly because that's what most students know and do already, and secondly because that's not the brilliant method that I'm going to show you. Why is it not brilliant? Sometimes it's very difficult to isolate the variable, and secondly, and most importantly, when you substitute it in, you're often left with a lot of fractions or decimals, and I find students make far more mistakes when using the substitution method compared to the elimination method, which is what I'm going to show you now. What is the elimination method and how does it work? I'll try to explain this as succinctly and clearly as possible. Well, you pick one of the variables that you want to find. Obviously, in this question, we know which variable we want to find. That's y. Then you think to yourself, if I want to find y, I will therefore want to eliminate x. So that's the start of the elimination method. Decide on one of the variables you want to eliminate, leaving the variable you want to find left over. If, by the way, you need to find both variables, just pick any of them to eliminate, and once you've found one, you can use that to find the other. Here, we want to find y, so we're going to eliminate x. But now let's get on to the meat of the method. How do you eliminate a variable? How would we eliminate x in this situation? Well, this is the way of remembering that I wanted to show you here. To eliminate x, make the numbers in front of x, called coefficients, the same. Look at the two numbers in front of the two x's. I know you're going to say, well, the first x doesn't have a number in front, but an x on its own is treated as one x. So we have one x on the top, and we have minus 2x on the bottom. So our two numbers, the fancy word is coefficients, in front of our two x's that we're going to eliminate are 1 and minus 2. Now here's the truth. Don't worry about the sign. Plus, minus doesn't really make a difference at this stage. So really just think about the 1 and the 2. At this point, you're going to have to trust me. The goal now is to make those numbers the same. I know you're thinking, why? But you'll see why later on in the method, basically. How are we going to make those numbers the same? And it will always be multiplying or dividing, usually just multiplying, not adding or subtracting. Well, one way would be to double the top equation, times everything in the top equation by two, and the one will become a two, making it the same number, if we ignore the signs, as the second equation. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply everything in the top equation by 2. Just to be clear, it has to be everything in the top equation by 2. The x, the y, and the minus 7. And let's see what happens if we do that. We now have these two equations. 2x plus 2y equals minus 14. And the second equation is the same as it started off. What have we achieved by doing that? We've made the numbers in front of x the same. For the first equation, it says 2x. For the second equation, it's minus 2x. Don't worry about the signs, the plus and minus, just focus on the number. 
we've made it the same. At this point, you're probably really curious, why are we putting all this effort into making the number the same of the variable we're going to eliminate? Well, here comes the major lesson that I want you to take away. If the signs in front of the letter to be eliminated are the same, we're going to subtract the equations and destroy those variables, eliminate them. If the signs in front of the letter to be eliminated are different, we're going to add the equations to eliminate them. And you'll see exactly how powerful this method is. Take a look at the signs in front of the letter X, which we are trying to eliminate. Are they the same or are they different? The signs in front of the X for the two equations are different. On the top, we have positive 2X. On the bottom, we have negative 2X. These signs, positive and negative, are different, so we're going to add the equations. And you're about to see in a few seconds why this all works and it will all come together. If we add those two equations, look what happens. 2x on the top plus minus 2x on the bottom becomes zero. They cancel out if you add the two equations. Just look vertically for how to add. We're literally doing 2x plus minus 2x and that becomes zero, cancels out. 2y plus 5y is 7y, minus 14 plus minus 56 is minus 70. So notice that we don't even bother writing 0x, they've been eliminated. The 2x plus minus 2x disappears. 2y plus 5y is 7y, minus 14 plus minus 56 is minus 70. And now at this point we could divide by 7, so y is minus 10. So these final couple of steps show you why we did all those steps at the beginning. Why did we multiply the top equation by two to make the numbers in front of x the same? Because then they would be eliminated when we add them. That's why you've got to make the numbers the same in front of the variable that you're trying to eliminate. Why does this rule exist that when the signs are the same, you subtract, and when the signs in front of the variables are different, you add? because that's the only way to eliminate those variables. That's the goal of this method, to eliminate x. It's called the elimination method. Just something for your notes, or for you just to notice now, it's the signs specifically in front of the letter that we're eliminating that count. Notice the signs in front of the y's were the same. You had plus 2y plus 5y, but that's irrelevant. We're not trying to eliminate the y. Here, we were trying to eliminate the x, so that we could find y. And notice the end result, we found y, not x. x was eliminated. And that, in a nutshell, is the elimination method. Could end the video here, but I thought I would do another example to show you again how it works. And then I thought that I would end on a nice, lovely example just to catch you out. It probably will catch you out. It's a tricky one, but there we go. It's a little bit unfair, but oh well. I'm sure you don't mind too much. Anyway, let's do another example of this elimination method. So as you can see, this is an official GRE question. And so we're gonna follow the same method. If you want, if you feel confident already in the method, pause the video, try it yourself. Otherwise you can wait for my explanation. In terms of further practice questions after this video ends, you have literally the whole internet. You can literally type in simultaneous equations or linear simultaneous equations, or systems of equations, and there are thousands of examples for you to solve. And I strongly recommend using this elimination method. Anyway, let's do this question. If X and Y satisfy the system of equations shown, that's like the American expression for simultaneous equations, what is the value of X? So pause, try it yourself, or just see how I do it. We're gonna try and find X. So who are we going to eliminate? We're going to eliminate y. How do we eliminate y? By making the coefficients, the numbers in front of y, the same. Here, you've got a 3y and a 7y. So it's not so simple as just doubling one of the equations. We have to think of a number that 3 goes into and that 7 goes into. 
If you want, you can think of the least common multiple, but it doesn't have to be that fancy, just any number that three goes into and seven goes into. In this example, I'm gonna pick 21, because three goes into 21 and seven goes into 21. How can I make each of those numbers 21? Well, you might notice we're gonna to have to multiply the equations by a different number. So for the first equation on top, to make the number in front of the y 21, I'm gonna to have to multiply by seven. Look at that top equation. If I multiply everything by seven, the three y will become a 21 y. Yes, I have to multiply the other terms in the equation also by seven. What am I gonna multiply the bottom equation by? Everything is gonna get multiplied by three in order to make the seven y the 21 y. Remember, we're trying to find x, so we need to eliminate y, and therefore the numbers in front of y need to be the same, even if that means multiplying the two equations by different numbers. So the second equation gets multiplied by three. What are the two end results? That would be 49x plus 21y equals 84, and 9x plus 7y equals 18. Now, what do we have to do? Well, the signs in front of the letters we're going to eliminate are the same. We have plus 21y and plus 21y. And when the signs are the same, what do we do? We subtract the equations. Because otherwise, if we added the two equations, the y wouldn't be eliminated. You get 42y. So it makes sense that when the signs are the same, you have to subtract the equations. That first equation, subtract the second equation, gives us 40x equals 66. Divide both sides by 40, 66 over 40, which is 33 over 20. So answer B. And that is, again, the essence of the elimination method. If you want to find one of the variables, eliminate the other variable. To eliminate that variable, make the numbers in front of the variable the same, sometimes by multiplying just one equation, other times by multiplying both equations, then add or subtract depending on the signs in front of those two variables. And Bob's your uncle, you have the correct answer every single time. Notice we avoid difficult fractions, decimals, it all works smoothly. A quick bit of advice is that sometimes there will be double negatives using this method. For example, imagine it was minus 21y on the top and minus 21y at the bottom. That would be the same sign, top and bottom, a negative and a negative. So we would need to subtract the equations. And that will still be zero. I was just gonna warn you that you have to be a bit careful because it's negative 21y take away negative 21y and the two minuses cancel and it becomes zero. So I want to warn you that sometimes in this method you do have double negatives, two negatives become a positive. But I don't want that to distract you. The method is the exact same as the one we've just done in these two questions. Okay, now for my cheeky final example. This will probably catch you out. It's the same question except now they're asking, what is the value of x minus y? If you want, pause the video, try it yourself. Otherwise, I'll show you what to do. What makes this question quite cheeky is that the method that I showed you does work, but it takes a bit of time. You could use the method I just showed you to work out x, and then put that value of x into one of the two equations to work out y, and you would get x take away y and find the result. But shortcut alert, as I've said, there are sometimes certain patterns for you to look out for in the GRE and GMAT, which is that they sometimes line the equations up perfectly. Notice we have a 7x and a 3y, 3x and 7y, so that you can take a massive shortcut and answer things instantly. To sum this up, the GRE and GMAT love it when you add equations together or subtract equations. Here, if we simply just subtract the two equations, watch what happens. 7x take away 3x is 4x, and 3y take away 7y is negative 4y. 12 take away 6 
is of course six. And now we know what four X minus four Y all lines up perfectly. So we could simply divide by four X minus Y is six divided by four or 1.5. And we get straight the answer without working out X and Y individually. Everything we talked about with the elimination method is still true. And that will now be, hopefully, if I persuaded you, your main method for solving simultaneous equations. I just want you to be alert that sometimes the GRE and GMAT will give you an opportunity to take a big shortcut. Doesn't happen all the time, just sometimes. One final quick example to end. Imagine the question here had been, what is the average of X and Y? Imagine that was the question. Same two equations, but this time they ask for the average of X plus Y. Well, the average of X and Y is X plus Y divided by two. So what we would need to find is X plus Y. Again, we could use the elimination method, be perfectly fine, work out X, work out Y, add them both up and divide by two. But again, do you notice things line up perfectly? We could simply add the two equations together. What would happen? You would get 10X plus 10Y equals 18. Divide by 10, X plus Y equals 1.8. And so if you want to find the average of X and Y, which is X plus Y divided by two, if X plus Y equals 1.8, X plus Y divided by two, which is the average, would equal 0.9. I didn't lay that one out just because I don't want to distract you from this main method that you've learned today, the elimination method. I just wanted to give you the good news that if things line up perfectly, if you spot a certain pattern, then you can sometimes take shortcuts straight to the answer by adding the two equations or subtracting them. Anyway, I didn't want this video to get too long, but if this is a topic that interests you, please do comment below and I can do more videos on simultaneous equations, more tricks with simultaneous equations or systems of equations in the near future. Anyway, hope you like and see you in the next video.